Hi, my name's Phil, I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the way Brexit appears to people on the outside, and I don't just mean outside the UK, I mean outside the EU itself, and sort of in a way what's led to it but also the danger that's posed to others who may be looking at the United Kingdom and thinking what are you doing and potentially feeling a little bit invulnerable to the same things themselves. I, it's really difficult to try and explain how Brexit is because it just seems to go in cycles and, and the best way I can think to try and explain it is imagine you've got the member states and they're all on a plane and let's say that plane is called the European Union, the good plain EU and on it amongst the other member states is the UK. It's perfectly happy up there uh, flying at 10,000 feet because you know we won't use metric because we're idiots, we've got our heads stuck in the past and that's not a Little Englander thing either. That's You find that throughout the British Isles, it's actually one of the biggest things that, that unites us all, the fact that we've got our heads stuck in the past. And uh, so we're flying along, everyone's having a great old time, doing really well, then all of a sudden the UK decides it wants to leave, I want to go, I want to jump, I'm going to jump. To which the rest of the EU says, oh, that's a shame, we've enjoyed your company. Maybe not so much that Farage fella, but you know. Um, should we sort you out a parachute then? Yay, parachute, parachute, parachute. And, and so the EU, you know, goes, right, I'll see what we can do. Come back with a parachute. The UK's there going, don't, don't like that, I'm not having that. The EU says, but, but this is a parachute, help you fall safely. Don't like Parachute, not having parachute. So then he says, well, um, well what, what, what do you want to do? Do you, do you want to jump without a parachute? No, uh, it's scary. It's too scary. Oh, um, well, do you want to just stay on the plane with us? You know, we're happy enough for that. No, not stay on the plane. We're going to jump. We're going to jump. So then the EU is going, well, you know, what we're going to do here? I mean, says, so you know, if you want to jump, you should really take the parachute. That's, that'll help you. You'll be safer then. I'm not taking the parachute. And, and well, what do you want to do then? What, what, what do you want? You, you, you make us land safely. You do it. Um, well, well, the parachute. Have the parachute. The parachute will help you fall safely. No, no. Not having parachute. You, you, you crashed the plate. Get me down. To which the EU goes, no, we all like it here. We're all happy up on this plane. You're the only ones that's not happy. You leave. And the UK's going, but you're just mean. And the EU says, well, be that as it may, you've got three options. You either leave with the parachute, evil parachute, not having parachute. You can stay with us. No, evil plane, I'm not staying here, I want to jump. Or you can leave without the parachute. Oh, scary. And it just goes on and on and on. And it does literally feel like that. It just literally, I from the outside, and it's not just me imagining this. Obviously, you, you get this sense from people who send me comments and things like that about how it appears from various different countries. I say particularly from outside the EU even. And... It is very much just like the UK is, is just like a child who's asking for something that is either downright dangerous for it and no responsible adults are going to concede because it's madness or actually frankly impossible. They're asking the impossible and, and it just goes over and over and round and round in circles. And, and ultimately what has led to it, of course, we know this, it's the massive amount of misinformation that got round to people to vote leave. Cambridge Analytica obviously had a huge role in that because what they were able to do is it's one thing for a politician to lie to the people because you'll get other politicians who will call them out. One thing for one part of the media to lie to the people, other parts of the media will call them out. What Cambridge Analytica were able to do with the Facebook targeted ads is they could target people who would be susceptible to changing their minds. They, they 
had got all this data from Facebook, lots of personal data on all of us, and they were able to build up personality profiles, target, and not just target individual people, target people in key areas as well. Uh, although for the Brexit referendum, it made no difference. They just targeted. And they can they target you with with misinformation and you look at this thing did you know this is going to happen did you know that the eu is going to be flooded with 76 million people from turkey as it i mean based on several false things there first of all turkey is not joining the eu whilst it's in its bit of a uh, mess at the moment second of all the, they literally were trying to give the impression that turkey was going to empty everyone in turkey was not just coming into the EU, but coming specifically to the UK. That was actually what was going to happen. And people bought it. And the problem is they had all these lies and they targeted to people on Facebook via these ads, did you know type thing. And they made all these things look a bit different and look like they were coming from different organizations. So then it's not just an organ, well, an organization, you know, political organization, of course, can like and mislead to get you to vote the way you want. People understand that. Right? But when you, you're looking on Facebook, you're looking on social media and you're constantly getting these same messages, they're saying very much the same thing. It's all a different style, different types of language used, but they're all saying the same thing. And you don't get the ones telling you something different because of course you don't. That's not how social media works. It's not how Facebook works. They target things they think you're interested in. It's a little bit like the advertising, isn't it? You know, the reason why advertisers want to advertise on things like YouTube so much is because they can target it, um, the, to target the ads for that product for the people who are more likely, based on their search history, to be interested in it. When you advertise on the television, I mean, you can target a little bit. Obviously, you know, if you're selling sort of macho male products, maybe you advertise in a break in a football game, something like that but it's limited. You essentially just have to throw your adverts out and hope for the best. Social media, very, very different, very targeted. So now you've got people who are now just getting one narrative. It looks like they've got all these different companies all telling them the same thing. No one else is telling them different. No one else is saying that these other companies are lying. So you're just getting this one message coming through, coming through, coming through. And it's very much like Hitler used to say in, in Mein Kampf, isn't it? You tell the lie, tell the big lie, tell it, keep telling it, make it simple, keep it over and over again, and eventually people will believe it. And that's exactly what happened. And, and the problem we have in the United Kingdom, and what it's really exposed, is that our electoral laws are not fit for purpose. And that's not my words, that's what MPs have said. Our own MPs have said this. We know about the Cambridge Analytica problem. I mean, you know, the whole world knows about it. Cambridge Analytica no longer exists, not because it was shut down. It shut itself down to protect itself from further investigations, gave it an excuse to destroy lots of data. And obviously in both the US and the UK, where they've done serious damage, our own governments who are not only complicit in those activities, but also the beneficiary of them have been blocking their own uh, like police agencies from investigating further anyway. But it was used as an excuse to get rid of that. But don't imagine that the people or the techniques that were used have gone. They haven't. They'll still be there. It'd be more difficult to track now because they'll pop up somewhere else. Eventually, people will find out. But again, they'll only find out once they've actually put it into practice again in another election. Let's say a second Brexit referendum or the general election that may be coming up this year, probably will be, or the presidential, the US presidential election that will definitely be coming up soon. You know, they, it will be cropping up again. And in the UK, at least, we have no one regulating this. There are laws. It's not that they can legally do it. They can't legally do it. We know they can't legally do it. But at the end of the day, if you've got a law that's not really being policed, it's not much of a law and we have no one regulating this political activity on social media. The normal sort of watchdogs that we have that are supposed to protect our electoral system, you know, we go to all of them, they say it's not, it's not in their purview and it's not their fault, they're not shirking responsibility. The government decide what each watchdog has control over and obviously for reasons, you know, that I've just explained, they're not bringing Facebook and other social media into any of their purviews. And until we get that, like as Carol Cadwallader has said, 
How can we be sure that we can ever have a free and fair election ever again? And, and, and it'd be worth bearing in mind, you know, in, in other countries, other countries who are looking at this and thinking, what are you doing? Are you insane? I mean, there's potentially only one country that can't do this, looking at you, America. Uh, I, I don't think even America's as screwed as we are at the moment. And yeah, I actually don't think Trump is doing as much damage in America um, in terms of dividing society as Brexit is in the UK. But I don't know. That's just my view from being in the UK. I'm not in the US. Let me know what you think. But um, what about laws in other countries? There'll be other countries who think, well, our laws are a bit more robust, a bit more up to date. Are they? Steve Bannon, who, remember, was the vice president of Cambridge Analytica, one of the people who started all this, um, you know, th th these techniques, He's operating in continental Europe, not in Britain. He's not just come over to Europe and based himself in Britain where you'd think he'd have, he'd have his spiritual home, you know, in terms of this sort of far-right nationalism uh, holding sway. No, no, he, he's... America's sort of done. Britain, work in progress, but it's nearly there. He's working on, on countries in continental Europe now, in the EU. He first of all based himself... Uh, in a monastery in Italy, who got kicked out of that on a technicality. He'll have set up somewhere else. Uh, he's not gone away. He's still there. He, he is in Europe and he is working on other countries. He thinks that there are um, like chinks in the armour to be exposed. You know, so, so it is a worry. And, and remember the way Cambridge Analytica sort of worked. It did work in, in various countries, collecting the data, refining its algorithms, sorting itself out. Brexit came after, they'd already done a lot of work in lots of other countries before uh, they worked on Brexit. And then that helped them prepare for the US presidential election, which you could argue was their coup de grace. It was certainly the last big work they ever did, because, as I say, it wasn't long after that, that the investigations began. And uh, But like I say, they're, they're not over. The company is, is gone, but the people haven't. The techniques haven't. The, the technology hasn't. Facebook hasn't changed a thing, you know. They, they got caught out. They realised what was going on. I'm not saying that they appreciated it, but they didn't do enough to stop it. What they should have done, of course, was called in law enforcement straight away. They didn't. Why didn't they? Because effectively that's like them bringing in saying, we can't control this situation. You're the ones who need to deal with it. At which they would have done that. And then what would have happened? They'd have said, right, Facebook, you've turned into a bit of a monster we need to regulate, we need to legislate against you, you know, to make sure that this sort of thing can't happen again. They didn't want that, so they've resisted that. So Facebook, although they're not directly responsible, are now complicit and they're huge. And, and so it is going to carry on. Don't imagine that Facebook can do anything about this. They can't do anything about it. The best they can do is to invite law enforcement, government agencies um, to regulate, to legislate, but that will hamper their own marketing activities for the aspects of their business that they don't think are morally wrong. So they'd rather some people did the most terrible things uh, with the data that they have than shut it down and potentially damage their profitability. And again, although I think the EU are taking this on board and the EU are starting to get a bit serious about it, have they really... Is any country really on top of it now? And I know the UK isn't. And I do worry, you know, the general election that's coming up, we are going to see the same things being used on Facebook again. If there was another second, you know, another referendum, another second referendum, another referendum, uh, Brexit referendum, then the same thing would happen again. You know, so that's where we are, really. And uh, and, I, and I would just say, you know, if you are in, in another country, just, just beware because just because you haven't, you know, dropped a bollock yet with uh, with any of these campaigns people are people there's nothing about british people or american people or people in any other country where these techniques were used very successfully you know brazil as well quite recently you know none of the people in these other countries are fundamentally different we're all the same we're all humans and and we can fall for the same old rubbish we just it's just some countries maybe have slightly better systems but are they good enough but anyway those are my thoughts on it. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you find the video interesting. If you'd like to support the channel further, then please click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.